Hey guys, welcome back to Under the Radar Books. I'm Brittany and today I want to do my March wrap up. So I had a great reading month. This is the first time since I started my channel that I really just read what I was in the mood for. Um, I did do a couple buddy reads which was great and things that I really enjoyed but for the most part I just picked up things that I really wanted to read. So the first thing that I finished was Upright Beasts by Lincoln Michelle and this was sent to me by Coffee House Press and I love this so much. It's such a great short story collection. I talk about it more in my underhyped read readathon uh, wrap up if you guys want to hear more of an explanation but it is a mix of realistic and magical realism short stories. They are just so great and they really explore how sometimes humans are the biggest monsters out of everything. So really, really good. Highly recommended. Next up, I read Little Sister Death by William Gay. And this is a new author that I had never heard of before. He actually has passed away, but he does have quite a um, large backlist. So I'm really excited to explore it and to read some more of his things he writes. Um, very dark fiction. He has a couple horror books out. This is one of them. Um, this was uh, published posthumously and it was kind of compiled by his, I believe his son and maybe an editor or something like that. Um, so it is a little bit disjointed and the ending just stops. It doesn't really have a complete ending. So if that's something that would bother you, I wouldn't necessarily recommend picking this one up, but I gave it four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It is about, it's loosely based off of the um, Bell Witch legend in um, Tennessee, I believe. And it, this story follows a writer who wrote a literary fiction book that just blew up and then he's kind of in a funk and so his editor wants him to write a horror novel in like 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 a genre horror novel so that he can just make a lot of sales and basically give himself more time to think of his next literary novel. And so he decides that it's a good idea to move his family to the Bell Witch house um, where this all these paranormal things have been happening and things like that and um, to basically get some inspiration for his book and some scary things take place and the writing is just poetic and beautiful and um, I actually just got a, another book called Twilight also by William Gay and I'm just really excited to explore the rest of his backlist and um, I really really highly recommend that you check him out. Next up I grabbed Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill and this was really really popular last year I believe and I've had it on my shelves for a while so I figured it was about time that I picked it up. This story follows um, a school where women are raised they're called Eves and basically humans have genetically changed and been modified so that they don't uh, produce females anymore and so um, females are created in perfect images they're like um, basically you know test tube babies where they modify them and make them perfect and women can either be a companion, which is like a wife um, to a rich person, a, a rich man. They can also be a concubine, which is very self-explanatory, or they can be a chastity, which is almost like a nun who um, they teach the eaves at school. I ended up giving it three stars. I enjoyed a lot of it. There's so much feminism in here and it just takes things that actually exist in society and put them to the very extreme. It made me think about a lot of ways that we treat women in our society and stereotypes and things like that and um, it really did make me think but at the same time a lot of the the characters even the main character I wanted to root for her and I wanted to like her but I didn't so I think it was hard for me because I didn't really connect with any of the characters and I, I wanted to fight for someone and I wanted to feel for someone and I think that was just a little bit frustrating for me. And I think that she was trying to make a point by doing that. Um, but at the same time, it just didn't work for me 100%. Um, I would recommend this if you like YA, um, you're trying to get into feminism. I think it's a really good book and a really good discussion book. Next up, I read a graphic novel. This is Eustace by S.J. Harris. This was so weird. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's about a young boy who it seems like it's placed in either around... I want to say World War II. He's very ill. He's in his bed. His parents are like super absentee. Um, his father or father figure is um, at war and his mother is very depressed and she has lots of problems. And so he pretty much takes care of himself. It is so bizarre because his uncle just shows up one day and basically like starts letting people live in his room. And I don't even know how to describe it. There's like it ends up having like 
he brings like prostitutes and all sorts of like weird people to hang out with this young kid and this kid's just like, you know, witnessing all of these adult things and it was just so, so bizarre. And then at the end, there's this newspaper clipping that makes it seem like this was a true story or based off a true story, but I wish that they would have put this in the beginning because then it would have made a lot more sense because it was just so far fit far fetched and odd. And even if the author like just based his story off of this really oddball news article, like that would have made a lot more sense. I just wish that there was more explanation. It doesn't say anywhere whether it's based off of a true story or whether he just made this whole thing up. It's just it was so weird. I I don't know. I, I gave it two out of five stars because I did finish it. So it wasn't absolutely horrible. And I did really enjoy the artwork. Um, it was definitely eerie and creepy. But it was just a little bit too weird for me. And that is crazy to say because you guys know I love weird. Next up, I finished Treats by Laura Williams. This was sent to me by Freight Books. And I did do a full review of this if you guys want to check it out. And since I have done my review, I think I've ra raised my rating to four out of five stars for this one. These are realistic stories about um, young people in their 20s and just navigating life and figuring things out. And um, the thing that I love so much about Laura Williams' writing is that you're so absorbed in these stories, even if they're not very long, you just forget everything else that's going around you and you're so focused and you're just in the story. So I really, really enjoyed this a lot. Um, a lot of them are funny and some are heartbreaking and it's really short. You can just fly right through it and I highly recommend it. Next up, I read Paper Tigers by Damien Angelica Walters and I found this through Liberty from Book Riot. I subscribe to her newsletter every week and she talks about new books that are coming out and this was one of them that she talked about. And so this follows a young woman who's in her 20s who has been in a horrible, horrible fire. She's completely disfigured um, throughout through the fire, she also lost one of her eyes, so she has a glass eye. She's living on her own in an apartment, um, and pretty much her only friend is her mother who comes to visit her. She has been dealing with a lot of things. She's very detached from the world, and she only goes out at night. She doesn't want anybody to see her. She calls herself Monster Girl. She's really struggling with her injuries and trying to discover who she is as this person, and she kind of starts having this fascination with old pictures and photo albums and photo books and things like that. So she goes into an antique store really late one night when she's walking by herself and it happens to be open and she finds a photo album and she decides to bring it home with her. And basically the, the photo album starts emitting like smells and things like that, almost like it's like alive. As things go on, you start to realize that the photo book is basically haunted and there's an evil spirit that is attached to it and it gets very creepy. I don't want to give too much away, but I really, really enjoyed this and I was definitely the kid that was obsessed with goosebumps and ghost stories and fear street and all that kind of stuff. And so I am forever looking for adult books that are the equivalent to that. And this is exactly what this was. I mean, by the writing is really nice in this, um, but by no means is this like a literary masterpiece. I did give it five out of five stars just because I appreciated it so much for what it was, which is a really exciting and creepy um, ghost story. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, I would really, really recommend this one. I read One by Sarah Crossan, and this is a YA book about Siamese twins. It's written in prose, so it's a really, really quick read. Um, and I was super, super surprised by this and impressed by this. Um, it explores the relationship of these two sisters who are Siamese twins and their bond that they have and struggles that they go through. Um, they go to high school and they meet a couple of, you know, misfit kids and they become friends. And it was just so real and raw. And I really, really loved this book. I definitely could see myself reading it again. Um, I really, really recommend it. I was so 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 impressed by it. Prose was stunning and I felt so involved with this with the story and the characters and oh it just like ripped my heart out and I just loved it. So I gave this one five stars as well because I was just completely blown away by it and I think that's what it deserves. Next up I read I Call Myself a Feminist, The View from 25 Women Under 30 and this is edited by Victoria Pepe. This was the first selection for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club which is um 
which was created and ran by Jean over at Jean's Bookish Thoughts. And this is exactly what it says. It's 25 different essays from women under the age of 25 and why they're feminist, experiences they've had, and um, it was really interesting. A lot of it was repetitive, and some of the essays spoke to me a lot more than others. Some of them felt very random and unnecessary. Um, in between the essays, there are these little um, quotes, which I actually enjoyed the most out of the book, I want to say. Um, and another thing that I think would have made this a lot stronger is um, when they have the essays, they put um, the person... <laughs> Hi, Watson. Hi. When they have the essays, they put the person's name, but they don't put what they do. There is a biography in the back so you can look it up, but I thought like it would I felt like it would have been a lot more powerful if each essay, you know, had the type of person or described the type of person that was saying what they were saying. Um, because some of them would have made more sense if you knew that the person was, say, a high school student or a comedian or a doctor. You know, like it just I think it would have come across a lot stronger if um, that was the case. This is a really good jumping off point for feminism. So if you haven't read very many feminist texts, I think this is a really good place to start. Um, I gave it three out of five stars, so I, I did enjoy it, but I do think I have read some feminist books that I enjoyed more. Next up, I read Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. And this was originally published in the 60s or the 70s. And um, it has been put out by Vintage, and I've had it for a while. And I don't want to give too much away because I went into this pretty blind. All I knew was that it was like a mystery. It was kind of sinister and creepy, um, and it definitely delivered in that sense. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, the back says, It was a cloudless summer day in the year 1900. Everyone at Apple Yard College for Young Ladies agreed that it was just the right day for a picnic at Hanging Rock. After lunch, a group of three girls climbed into the blaze of the afternoon sun, pressing on through the scrub into the shadows of Hanging Rock, further higher until they disappeared, and they never returned. So, if you're looking for answers in this book, you're not going to get them. But I'm a big fan of amb ambiguous endings and trying to, like, speculate and figure out what you think went wrong, and I really, really enjoy that. So, I loved this a lot. I gave it four out of five stars, and um, I definitely recommend it. Next up, I read The Reader on the 627. This is by Jean-Paul... Dide Laurent, translated by Ross Schwartz, and this is about a man who's in his 30s, I believe, who works for a bulk pulping factory, and so basically he operates this machine that takes old books and, you know, books that have been overpublished and um, cuts them up into tiny pieces, sprays them with a bunch of water, and creates like this mulch pulpy stuff so that they can recreate more books or use it for other things. And he really hates his job. He hates that, like, books are being destroyed and words are being destroyed. But um, he doesn't know what else to do. Every day when he goes and cleans out the machine, he climbs inside and finds stray pages and keeps them, puts them in his jacket. And he ends up reading them on the train to and from work. Um, and he reads just these random snippets of all these different books to the passengers that are in the train. And he's kind of sharing, you know, the love of literature and people really appreciate that. He ends up going and reading to a retirement home with senior citizens. And this book is just filled with such a quirky cast of characters. It was a really, really fun read and it wasn't what I was expecting. I thought it would focus more on his job and him reading in the train, but it actually turns into a love story and um, what happens is he ends up finding a um, USB that has someone's like diary or journal on it, um, a young woman named Julie, and he pretty much falls in love with her writing and falls in love with the things that she's saying and gets determined to figure out who she is and how he can find her. And I really, really loved it. It was such a small, quirky little book and it was just really wonderful. It's it's like a literary love story and it's a love story to not only books and words but also between two people and two human beings and how sometimes we find the person we're supposed to be with in the most ex unexpected ways. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. It was really really wonderful and lovely. Next up was the first of my buddy reads that I read this month and um, the first one was 
The Honors by Tim Clare, and I read this um, with Caitlin from Kitty G, Elena from Elena Reads Books, and then a subscriber named Jackie, and we had a lovely discussion about it, and I think most of us went in thinking this was going to be like a, a historical fiction slash mystery, but this is full-blown fantasy, and it starts out with a bang. It is such a fast, quick read. It follows a child protagonist named Delphine, who is so quirky and so badass. She's just an amazing protagonist, and I loved following her throughout her story. It is creepy and dark, and I cannot wait to see what else Tim Clare put, puts out. So I gave this four and a half out of five stars and really loved it. This book that uh, me and Elena decided to read, also uh, Jean joined us from Jean's Bookish Thoughts. We read The Book Collector by Alice Thompson, and this is about a woman who meets a man and they get married a month later. She moves into his house and um, he is a book collector. He is obsessed with books and he has a huge library and um, at first the relationship starts out really strong and then it really starts to crumble and you kind of realize what type of person this man really is and how she um, kind of becomes trapped in this weird relationships and, and gets wrapped up in um, something very sinister. I really, really enjoyed this. I read this super quickly. Um, I definitely think I could have read it in one sitting if I wasn't so busy, but I did read it in 24 hours, I think. Um, it's a very quick read. The writing is really fantastic, and I actually ordered um, a couple more of Alice Thompson's older works because I am really intrigued by her as an author. I gave this one four out of five stars. And I definitely recommend it if you're into magical realism. If you enjoyed The Dumb House, you probably enjoy this one as well. Next up, I finished Descender Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire. This was amazing. <laughs> I loved this. This is up there with some of my favorite graphic novels that I've ever read. Um, this follows a world where artificial intelligence is a part of life. And one day these huge robots come to... Um, a variety of planets and basically try to wipe out all of the humans. So then from that point on, humans rebel against um, robots and artificial intelligence and basically wipe out all that there is because they're worried about them turning on them and taking over. So in order to try to stop these giant robots that destroyed humanity in the first place, they um, realize that there is a small little boy robot um, that is that has survived on one of these small mining colonies. So the government of this um, world goes to try to rescue him and at the same time there is people uh, almost like bounty hunters trying to find him and destroy him because they don't want any more robots to be in existence. So you follow kind of this ragtag group of people that include this little boy robot and his dog robot and then this giant mining robot who's not very intelligent and then the scientist who created the robot as well as a couple of government agencies and um, it's just really, really, really fascinating, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed all of it, and the the artwork, I wasn't super excited about when I started it, but then as I read the story, it really, really fits with the story. I can't wait to read the rest of the series. So those are all of the things that I read in March. Um, I had a great reading month. I um, really, really enjoyed everything that I read, and... I would love to know what you guys picked up in March and if you had a really good month. Um, if you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments down below or if you're hoping to pick any of them up or you like the sound of them. I'd also love to talk about that as well. Until next time, happy reading, guys.